Books have the power to expand our intelligence, or take us on an adventure and entertain us, and in most cases, reading a book is never a bad thing. However, there are some dark and mysterious nightmarish books from history that should never be read, ever. Ranging from a text that's said to kill anyone who ever reads it aloud, to a book that's so dangerous it's locked away in the secret vaults of the Vatican. So let's jump right in and take a look. The Book of Soigar also known as the Book That Kills. It's a 16th century Latin book on magic, which was believed to have been lost forever until two manuscripts were found in the British Library in 1990. And the odd thing about this book is that it's written in coded grids of letters. One of those manuscripts was owned by a famous scholar known as John Dee. He devoted most of his life to trying to decipher the book, and the story goes that he was so frustrated by the letters that he summoned an angel to help crack it and learn his secrets. He summoned the angel Uriel, who explained that the book came into existence when Adam ended paradise, and that it could only be interpreted by the archangel Michael, and to this day it has yet to be unlocked and the secret is still hidden. If you're thinking of having a go at cracking it yourself, you should know that according to legend, anyone who figures it out is fated to die within two and a half years. Tomino's Hell is a Japanese poem that featured in a book called The Heart is Like a Rolling Stone that was written in 1919. The poem is about a young boy named Tamino who is grieving the death of his family. The words are written from pure suffering that has now taken the form of a curse. And it's said that it should only be read in your mind and never out aloud, as whoever reads it will die and their soul will be forever damned and be sent to the darkest corners of hell. Now I'm not going to read it out loud just to be on the safe side, but I'm going to show you the poem and like I said it's safe to read in your mind. So if you want I'll give you a few seconds to take a look and pause it, but remember don't read it out aloud if you're superstitious. If you don't want to read it, just skip ahead. The Necronomicon Also known as the Book of the Names of the Dead, Book of the Laws of the Dead, Book of Dead Names, and Knower of the Laws of the Dead. And it contains information on how to raise the dead, and it's believed it made its author go insane. The Necronomicon is said to be a fictional book, which was dreamt up by horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. And people were so interested in this prop and the references to it in his stories, that people took the opportunity to publish it, and you can easily go online and buy it. As you probably guessed by now, it contains information about the dead. And it widely features a nightmarish creature referred to as Cthulhu Mythos. A being so hard for the human mind to comprehend, it could easily make you lose your mind just thinking about it. H.P. Lovecraft said that in his stories, the book was written by a man called the Mad Arab Abdul Alhazred, and that the Necronomicon was bound in human flesh. And this book is said to be so strangely detailed and scary that it's gathered a huge cult following all over the world. A Grimoire is a book of magic that usually contains rituals and instructions for casting spells, and most witches believe that a book of shadows or a Grimoire should be burnt after the witch's death in order to keep their magical identity a secret. Now in 2013, a collection of unknown grimoires went up for sale on a website that sold for $13,865, as they belonged to a famous 60s high priestess of Wicca, who led her own coven. The book contained handwritten information on incantations, how to summon good and evil spirits, curses, spells, and how to make cures and potions, and oddly, even a part on how to make hairspray. Now the buyer and seller were kept anonymous, but the listing did detail that the book was inscribed in Thaven, which is an ancient alphabet used in Wicca to hide information from those who do not believe in witchcraft. And once translated, it turned out to be a haunting warning and a curse. The warning said, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. The Orphan Story is a book that was written in the early 1600s by a monk that broke his sacred vows, and it tells the tale of a young boy who leaves Spain at the age of 14 to seek out adventure and fortune in the Spanish colonies. The story follows the boy on his travels, and it features run-ins with pirates, romantic encounters, and showing the boy becoming a soldier, then a monk, and then an archbishop. The strange thing with this book is that it was only published over 400 years later in 2018, despite many attempts to translate it and get it published throughout its history. That's because anyone who has ever been involved with it is said to have met a tragic end, through things such as unexplained diseases or accidents. 
This has led to the belief that the book is cursed, but the person who managed to finally publish it claims it's a wonderful window into the golden age of Spanish history. And thankfully, she's still alive today. The Grand Grimoire, sometimes called Red Dragon or the Gospel of Satan. It's an ancient book thought to hold incredible power, but power that comes with a price. The book was apparently written by someone called Honorius of Thebes, who claimed to have been possessed by the devil himself. And the original book is believed to be one of the darkest occult books ever. And it's apparently so dangerous it's locked away in the secret vaults of the Vatican. Not much is really known about the text, apart from the fact it was written in 1512, and variations of it have been published, and that it contains information on how to summon some pretty nasty demons. Oh, and the fact that anyone who reads it is offering their soul to the devil. The Book of Sacred Magic of Abramelin the Mage is a 15th century manuscript that was translated into English in the year 1900, and it's long since had a reputation for being cursed. The text was said to have been written by Abraham of Wurzburg, after he went on a quest to Egypt where he encountered a magician called Abramelin who taught him a secret method of magic. It contains rituals for things like raising the dead, acquiring treasures, summoning spirits, becoming invisible, starting storms, and even things like gaining the ability to travel through air and water. Now Abraham believed that every person has their own unique personal demon. In his book he teaches how to summon and control that demon, to grant things like I previously mentioned. But all of those powers and abilities come with a downside. It's thought that anyone who owned the sacred book would be haunted by spirits, and they would bring about terrible luck and ultimately cause an early death. In 1648, the Thirty Year War was nearing its end, and the Swedish army looted the city of Prague. They returned home with their loot, and amongst the treasure was a book known as the Codex Gigas, which would later become known as the Devil's Bible. The Devil's Bible was said to have again been written by a monk who had broken his vows at some point in the 12th century. As punishment for breaking those vows, he was sentenced to death, and he was put in a room with the doorway bricked up so he would slowly die from starvation. In those long days waiting for the end, the monk decided to write a book about everything he knew about the human race. On his final night, he still hadn't finished the book. So he summoned the devil and asked him to finish it, in exchange for his soul. The book was then apparently completed by the devil himself. It originally had 320 pages, but somewhere along the line someone removed the last 10, and it contains dark images and rituals and information about demonic entities, and even drawings of the devil himself. And that brings this video to an end, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to turn notifications on. That way you'll see all my new uploads. But anyways, take care, I will see you in the next one, and goodbye.